Hello everyone. So today we would be discussing about Alumina Solexa sequencing method, which is also called as your reversible terminator sequencing. So how is it this uh, reversible terminator sequencing different from your traditional Sanger's method? So in traditional Sanger's method, we use dideoxynucleotide, which is the terminator. So when the chain is or DNA chain is elongated during the sequencing process, so these dideoxynucleotides are going to uh, stop it from extension and that is how it will help in termination. But in this case, it is irreversible. So that is the reason why you are going to get small, small stretches of DNA during the sequencing process. And that is the reason why we, use, uh, we will be uh, using electrophoresis in this particular method. But when you use a reversible terminator sequencing, here this dideoxynucleotide is being replaced by reversible terminators. So once your uh, which nucleotide has been added or which nucleotide is in the place is identified, then the elongation can be again resumed back. Okay. So <clears throat> there are two types of uh, terminators. Uh, one is your three prime O blocked reversible terminator and the other is your 3 prime unblocked reversible terminators. Uh, then uh, when all other NGS methods are using your emulsion PCR method, in this particular method we have to use the bridge PCR. So this definitely increases the efficiency of the method because the number of uh, when the clonal amplification takes place, the number of the chains or number of the template strands that you are going to get is far more as compared to your emulsion PCR. So let us have a quick review of what happens in this particular method. So here you can see that you have the DNA fragments and this DNA fragments will go and bind to your uh, these are the flow cells which carry the primers uh, for or you can say the probes for the adapters which are uh, being already bind to your DNA fragments. So they will go and bind and then the other end, the other end, this particular end again will get bridged or you can say it will get folded onto the surface. So when the folding is being done, there are enzymes that is your DNA polymerase is going to be added and this DNA polymerase using the primers will make the second copy of this folded one. You can see over here and then once the, both the copies are being made, then the denaturation will be taking place. Again, you can have these kind of your uh, single stranded DNAs which will again fall back. They will again fall back onto these probes and the same process would be repeated again. So because of this repetition of the process, so every, so if you have three different templates, you will get three different clusters over here onto your, uh, whatever your solid support. So now let us discuss about the 3 prime O block reversible terminator. So this mechanism using this uh, uses a sequencing by a synthesis approach. So as I said that there would be your primers and then these primers are going to be elongated with the help of your DNA polymerase. So uh, the sequencing primers and the templates are already been uh, present onto your solid support. So the support is then now ex, uh, exposed to all the four DNA bases, okay? So which have different fluorophores. So if you have four different uh, DNA bases, then four different fluorophores would be attached to each of this DNA bases, okay? And along with this fluorophores, they will have the three prime uh, ortho azido methyl group. So this azido methyl group is acting as your terminal. Okay, so that is how it would be blocking the 3 prime OH group instead of your 3 prime OH group, you would be having this uh, azido methyl group, which is so we can see over here. So, this is your solid support, and this is your template strand. So, now when the primer comes and binds, and this primer now gets elongated, so the first nucleotide that has to come and bind to your exposed nucleotide. So, this is the exposed nucleotide that is A. So, you have so a TTP will come and bind over here okay so DNA polymerase will help in binding of this TTP but this TTP is going to have the uh, 3 prime ortho azidomethyl group to it so that is the reason why once your this uh, whatever your nucleotide comes and binds to your first position 
it cannot be elongated further okay so it will get stalled at this particular position and now what happens is the fluorescent signal so here you can see that this uh, ttp is giving you a green fluorescent signal so this green fluorescent signal is going to be captured by the camera which is there so once this capturing has already been taken place then the terminators are removed okay so once the terminator is being removed so what will happen again your 3 prime oh group is in place so that will help in the next nucleotide to come and bind to the uh, whatever your complementary is there so another t will come over here and will get bind so that is how your one by one one by one the nucleotides will get added and the signals are going to be uh, recorded by the camera so accordingly to which sequence uh, these fluorescent signals are being recorded we can come to know that which is the nucleotide that has been, the sequence can be reduced so here you can see that the process is repeated again and again adding one one nucleotide at a time and the imaging in between the computers are then used to detect the base at each side of this image and then this is used to construct the sequence so because here we are not using the irreversible terminators all the sequence reads are going to be of the same length okay so here you can see all of them are going to be of the same length and the read length depends upon the number of cycles that have be so this particular diagram summarizes the entire process of your uh, solexa alumina sequencing method so you will have the uh, genomic dna that is going to be fragmented and the uh, adapters are going to be ligated on the ends and using those adapters they will get bound to your flow cells and using your bridge pcr here you can see you will be getting clusters of your this template dna so once you have re uh, received the uh, clusters of this template dna now to this template dna you are uh, dntps and your dna polymerase is going to be added and then uh, once it has been added the fluorescence is going to be recorded by your uh, cameras it would be washed washed uh, so that whatever the unbound ones are uh, unbound dntps they are going to be washed off the image has been taken once the image has been taken the cleaving of the terminator takes place okay so once the terminator is been uh, um, cleaved off again it is ready to go for the next cycle of addition of your dntps that is how the entire process will be con uh, process will be continued till the entire sequence have been deduced so now let me explain about the three prime unblocked reversible terminators so the reversible terminator group of unblocked reversible terminators is linked to both the base as well as your fluorescence group okay so that means what it is going to be uh, acting as or uh, you can say it is acting as the terminator group as well as it is acting as the reporter that means if this terminator group is there then only the reporting of the fluorescence will take place so this method differs from the other method that we have just discussed in three ways first of all the three prime position is not blocked the base is going to have the free three prime oh group and now here four different fluorophores are not required because in this particular method one by one sequentially the uh, your dntps are going to be added to these bases and going to be checked whether any signal has been captured or not so if the signal has been captured that means that particular dntp has been attached at that particular moment so only one fluorophore is going to be used so if a particular dntp is getting attached then the uh, fluorescence is going to be reported and then once this reporting has been done then the uh, terminator is been removed so once the terminator is been removed then there would be no fluorescence that is going to be captured so that is the reason why only one fluorophore can be used in this particular method but the main disadvantage of these techniques lies with its poor read length the read length is really short which can be caused because of these two phenomena in order to prevent uh, incorporation of two nucleotides in a single step a block is put in place however in the event of no block addition due to a poor synthesis strands can become uh, can come out of the phase creating some noise which limits the read length and noise can also be created noise means what background unnecessary signals that come in 
place okay so these noise can also be created if the fluorophore is unsuccessfully attached or removed so these problems are prevalent in other sequencing methods also and these are the reasons why uh, the read length is a problem in case of ngs